Thanks everybody for joining us um, for this session to learn more about the Career Design Center. Today we're lucky enough to have two assistant uh, directors of the new Career Design the, the Career Design Center, which is not new but renamed. Um, joining us today, Jillian Morley and Joseph Banks. Um, I'm going to turn the time over to them. If you have questions and you're out in Zoom land, please feel free to type them in. Sam's going to be monitoring that and we'll read your questions, um, or, or I can. And um, yeah, feel free. This is going to be exciting. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph Banks. I'm an assistant director over at um, one of the assistant directors at the Career Design Center. Uh, I'm also the dedicated career coach for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, as well as the Kane College of the Arts. And I work a lot with uh, internships as well for the whole campus. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Jillian Morley, the other assistant director at the Career Design Center, and I am the career coach for the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences, as well as exploratory students. Joe and I are really excited to share a lot of the updates that the Career Design Center has as we have changed from career services to the Career Design Center. So we want to let you know all of the changes we've been through and how we can partner and collaborate and help students really reach their career goals. So just to run through what we'll talk about today, um, we want to talk about what informed our changes. So why did we make this big switch from career services to the Career Design Center? and also the future directions of career education. So where are we going and um, how do we want to keep growing and scaling? Then we'll talk about what our specific changes have been and then potential partnerships and resources that you all can take advantage of. So to give you context of how we even got here, um, so we, you know, we have about five career coaches that are assigned to the entire institution. So five career coaches for our you know, thousands and thousands of students, and we saw that we were only working with about 10% of students. And so that is a pretty small percentage if we look at the whole population. And these students were also pretty high achieving. So we saw that, you know, we're able to do really great things with these students, help them reach their career goals. But these students were high achieving, so even if they didn't come and see us, they would be fine. So then that made us really think, okay, how can we reach the 90% of other students who are not coming to see us, who might need more of that career support? So how do we really get in touch with those students and work with them more? So because of that information, we really looked at, okay, how can we f um, scale what we're doing to better serve those students? So um, Joe will talk about how we're, we're doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So kind of the, the basis of some of our ideas, uh, we had our vice provost, Janet Anderson, she was um, having us read this article uh, about the five future directions in university career services uh, written by Farouk Day and Christine Cruz Vergara. And she, this is a, a great article. I highly recommend that you read it. Um, there's also a YouTube video around it as well. And essentially, um, while we were reading this article, you know, it said the basic five directions of career services now, um, what they're changing into is that, you know, career services needs to systematically integrate into academics. And it's like one of the main goals is trying to reach all students. And what is the one thing that all students have in common and is the academics, right? They all have classes that they go to. And thus, the integration into the academic experience um, was really necessary in order to ensure that, you know, even low-income students and um, all the other students, non-traditional students, we're able to receive this direction as well. Um, other directions would be like to build scalable structures. Uh, as we mentioned, you know, we found out that we were only reaching maybe about 10% of the uh, students, and but even if we were to meet all of the students, we don't necessarily have the, the capacity um, with our current office to be able to meet them. So we had to find, at least as far as those one-on-one -on -one coaching goes, so we had to try to find and build different uh, methods of reaching out to those students. Uh, another aspect was being able to teach life design and work skills uh, so that when students go out into their careers, they know that it's not just what we were able to help them with right here while they're in the university, but even once they go out of the university that they still have those skills, they still have that tool set and that mindset that they need to be successful. Um, other things was data related, measuring impact over input. Basically, we wanted to see if our methods were actually leading to action. Um, such as applying to jobs, participating in internships, et cetera. And of course, redefining the narrative. And that's kind of part of this right here is helping to spread the word of how we're changing and how the, what the new directions are for the rest of the campus. 
And another interesting part of this article talks about the history of career services. So, you know, 20, 30 years ago, what does the industry look like compared to now? And so as the workforce changes, as technology changes, our field also has to change. And so really the field of career services is moving away from not the transactional uh, type of service where a student comes in, we get them a job, but now it's more of how can you be adaptable and flexible in the workplace because there's so many options out there and it's impossible to just place a student um, that is gone. And so now we really need to especially teach students the design principles to help them really build a path and give themselves options to be successful. So um, in about, I think it was 2017, our team came across this book, Designing Your Life. And this has been, this book has made a really big splash in the career industry for career services. It was written by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans, and they're both engineers at Stanford. Um, and as they were teaching classes at Stanford, a lot of students were approaching them with career questions. And the, Dave and Bill were seeing, you know, this is a really big problem. And so they addressed it, they talked with students, and they ended up um, developing a class that takes design principles that you would use in engineering, but applying it to your career and your life. And it was a really successful class. And then they wrote this book about it, and now many institutions use this book with career services. So about three and a half years ago now, our office really started implementing Designing Your Life with these five design mindsets so that we could start really teaching students how to design their paths forward rather than um, being reactive and just waiting for opportunities to fall into their laps. So to the five design mindsets that we really focus on, first is be curious. We really want to encourage students to learn. You know, as they come into the university, we want to teach students how to be good learners. And being curious goes right along with that. We want them to be curious about the career options ahead of them. We also want to teach them to have a bias towards action. So go out there, prototype some ideas. If you think you might be interested in being a pilot, Go take a class, go job shadow, go talk to someone who's in that industry just to see what it might be like. That bias to action is really important to help students navigate and calibrate to see what is a really good fit for them. Then reframing problems. Um, this one is all about helping students understand how they can look at different challenges or obstacles and work through it more strategically rather than um, you know giving up or um, you know, commonly we'll hear students, you know, they didn't do well in one class, so they better switch majors, they better X, Y, Z. So instead of having students kind of jump, we want to talk the, through it with them and see, okay, how can we look at this? How can we reframe it to see what your best course of action is? Then also asking for help, um, having a team around you. So there's so many resources at the university that students can utilize. And oftentimes it's just making sure that they know what resources are out there. Uh, we want to tell them, you know, go talk to your academic advisor, go to faculty office hours, use all of these wonderful resources because we're all here to help students be successful. And then lastly, helping students understand it's a process. It can be really frustrating when a student feels like they have to know right now what career path they're gonna pursue for the next 30 years. And that just really isn't realistic anymore. And so helping, understand, helping students understand it's a process and that if you use these mindsets all together, you can really navigate and create a really great successful path for yourself. So through all of our different initiatives and changes, this is really at the root of what we're doing. These five design mindsets are really our foundation that we want to keep building off of so we can help students be successful. Yeah, and definitely we want to show that we practice what we preach. And so we applied a lot of these mindsets to um, when we were looking at our career services and trying to redesign it and rebrand it and everything like that. Um, and so one of the really exciting things that we did over this past year was kind of look at our, our missions, 
uh, in general. And sort of the, the reframing things, like, all right, well, look at the issues that we have. What are the solutions? What are we trying to do? Uh, and so the mission statement that we have right now is to empower all students to design their career paths through university-wide career education, employer engagement, and access to experiential learning and post-graduation opportunities. And some of the really key takeaways from this is, you know, one, that we want to be able to reach all students. Uh, that was, you know, with the goal of only, well, with only about five coaches, it's uh, almost impossible to meet with every student one-on-one, -on -one, as we mentioned before, but also we want to try to help develop those resources, develop methods of communicating so that we can reach everybody even, you know, where they're at, whether it be, um, you know, after, you know, after work or if they're students who um, have other things, other competing aspects like work or family or even life in general, all of those things, um, we want to be able to reach all of them and be able to touch all of them. Um, the other thing is the designing part itself, mm -hmm. where we want students to be able to see that the career path is not just a service that we provide, hey, here's your career path, go out and do it, but also that they, are, they have ownership that empowers them to design their own path that um, we recognize every path is different and sometimes there's going to be changes and things that you need to make to those paths. And so if students are have that ability to treat their career path as a design, um, then they will have the ability to be successful even after uh, the university. And so we try to do that with you know our career education, being able to teach students how to, to find those positions and how to um, proactively search for opportunities. Also to engage with employers here on campus uh, and make sure that students have access to those experiential learning opportunities. And this can be like internships, this could be volunteer activities, this could be practicums, field work, um, but opportunities where they can actually see how their education applies and to the work that they wanna do. And of course, the post-graduation opportunities, whether that be um, continuing education or if that be going into a job or volunteerism and things like that. And so all of those things, we really wanted to, to get them and we wanted to help that redefine us as a unit. Uh, and so we kind of reframed that issue and moved forward with it. And so some of the new initiatives that we focused on, and we're gonna cover a little bit about each of those, but these are some of the six areas that we decided to look at. Um, this would be data, uh, the career series courses that we've um, provided, Canvas courses that faculty can use and embed in their classrooms, uh, as well as a Canvas course that students can access. Uh, developing stronger partnerships with uh, the university community and also updating our own website. So just wanted to show a little bit about what we did with the data. And so when we were first looking at this and trying to decide things, we actually reached out to the Office of Academic and Instructional Services to kind of help us look at the appointments that we've had in the past few years and is to do sort of a comparison to how it affected persistence. And we found out some really interesting things. So, you know, one of it is where we got the data that we were only you know, reaching kind of about the 10% of the students overall, but we also saw that there was um, a significant influence on persistence when students came and see us, especially with those who were first generation or for those who were returning students. Um, but we also found out that the, most of our appointments were actually going to uh, a lot of the top, top students, the, the ones that were more highly engaged and the ones that were kind of a lot more proactive, but also that ended up being the ones that um, you know, would have been successful with or without our help. And so we're, we looked at that and we're like, we need to find, we, we're using this data to find out how we can start reaching out to more and more people. And so that's how the data has kind of driven our decision making there. We're also trying to be a little bit more um, descriptive as far as what we publish out there. And so, for example, we have our, our first destination survey. Um, before we used to just come up with a, like a PDF or a, a file that someone could access and look through all the PDF data, um, all the first destination data there. Uh, and we actually helped work with AAA and kind of developed that and with some of our great student workers and developed um, a Tableau dashboard that people can use. And it's a lot more dynamic as far as like just seeing where our students are first going, whether it be um, continuing on to graduate school or if they, what are their average salaries, things like that. Um, and that's something that's available on our website right now. Um, it's just a start as far as like what we can do with our data to help us make our decisions, but that was a very important part into how we make our decisions here. Another area that we've been focusing on is our open Canvas class for students. So this class, it's kind of like an on-demand class that students can access anytime. 
We wanted to have this resource, and we've had this resource for several years now, but it's time we looked at it, updated it, and made it more accessible. So this one will be launching hopefully this spring, so students can, you know, anytime, anywhere, learn about, you know, how do I write a resume, or how do I look for an internship. We want these as easily accessible as possible, so this one will keep growing, and um, like I said, we'll hopefully launch it in the spring. Um, so just some of the topics that we'll cover on here will be, you know, exploring majors and career options, um, the resume cover letter writing, the internship, internship search, interviewing strategies, networking, but even um, within those we'll do really specific topics like how do you negotiate offers or how do you apply for jobs on the, on the government website, things like that. So this will be really great and robust as we continue to build it. Another resource that we launched this fall was our career modules for faculty. And this is one of my favorite ones that we worked on. This one was a really big undertaking. Well, all of it was, but I feel like this one was a, particularly a really big undertaking. Um, so one of our most popular services is going into the classrooms and presenting to students face to face. And we know that's not possible with all of the classes. There's online classes, there's statewide classes. So this resource is really great to help us reach more classrooms. Um, faculty can use this content and embed it right into their classes to supplement the content they're already working through. Um, so we've curated content that was most popular. So starting with resumes and cover letters, the job and internship search, interviewing and networking. So we're gonna show you a little bit more about these and how you can use them. But so far they've been really great to supplement curriculum that faculty are already teaching. And it's an easy thing to just embed and use as you'd like. So each module has four steps to it. Um, we know students will interact with it in different ways. So we wanted to try to make it easy for them to use. So each has four steps. The first step is the overview of our office and how we can help students. Then the second step is the actual like content around the topic. So kind of going through our presentation. Then the third step is the alumni experience. So with this one, we really wanna help students understand when you go on and do great things in your career, you can still be involved as an alumni, whether, you know, maybe coming back and offering to help students with their resume and cover letter or offering to do informational interviews. So just giving students ideas how they can stay engaged if they want. Then the fourth step are um, optional assignment ideas. So if um, faculty want to have points associated with the module content, they can embed these assignments and use them as they would like. Um, so far we've seen faculty use it even as extra credit, which has been really interesting. So getting this into your class is really easy. That was one of the most important things for us. We, didn't, we did not want to make extra work for faculty. We wanted to make this super easy and seamless. So when you're on the Career Design Center website, we have that faculty and staff tab, and we'll go through the other pieces on there. But the one at the bottom that says Career Modules for Faculty is where you'll go for this content. Um, so, um, when you go onto the tab there, it gives you the instructions, and basically, we have you self-enroll in the class so you can look through it as a student to see what content you actually want. Then you fill out a ServiceNow form telling me what modules you want, and that's all you have to do. Once you fill out that ServiceNow form, it comes to me, and we have an instructional designer copy the module into your class, so you don't have to deal with any of that. Then from there, you can just use what you want you know, publish, unpublish, or edit, whatever you would like. So, so far we've had a, a good handful of faculty using that this fall. Um, we're really excited to use it again in the spring, so if you're interested or have questions or issues using that one, definitely let us know. We've got a question in the chat here. Yeah. Um, someone in the chat is asking, what kind of classes can you imagine integrating this in? I've got my speaker on my, on my thing on my, on my computer, so I think we're okay. okay. Um, what kind of classes, so you said there's been a number, could you give mm -hmm. us some examples of, of kind of what kind of courses these are and how maybe, how they're integrating this content into their courses? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so we've had a few classes, Okay. okay, so the question, I'll just repeat it. So the question was how have faculty been using it? What type of classes has it been going into so far? 
Um, so we've seen a handful of classes from the College of Humanities as well as the College of Education. So a couple um, kinesiology classes embedded it, a couple from um, I think history. So it's you know major specific faculty. Um, you know those classes they're major specific, um, but like extra credit was one of the ways. So faculty will use it as extra credit. Um, the topics for the classes were not career specific though. So you know it was just uh, you know great classes that contribute to the majors, but not necessarily career specific. So we are collecting data to see how it went. So we'll hopefully have more info, but I, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd definitely say that this is, um, we're in the try it out phase, yeah. the bias to action, where we're like, okay, we wanna try this out. We, we've got this great idea and we wanna, we, we have a few of the courses that have done it. And that's what we're evaluating. We're like, okay, let's see how effective it is. Mm -hmm. um, I know with each of those courses, we have an opportunity for the students to give sort of feedback through a Qualtrics survey, as mm -hmm. well as through um, just course interaction. Um, and then we also are asking faculty to give their feedback there too, which is great because, you know, we get to hear and make adjustments for the next semester and the next iteration of these uh, modules. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, and we will be getting even more and more content as we get some better feedback too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so um, two things with that. We're creating college specific content right now to have some ready for spring so we can have faculty embed more, even more specific content that applies to their industries. But then also, um, you know, where presentations are really popular for our office to provide, this is great. You know, if you teach an online class and um, depending how you have it set up, if you know you'll be out for a week, instead of kind of skipping a module, just embed this and let us present to your class that week you'll be out, even for in-person classes. So it's a great way to supplement if you know you'll be off a week or even if um, you have a little extra time or again want to put in some extra credit. So. And then so some of the other resources that we have for uh, students to use, uh, one is like the resume and cover letter drop-in times that we have. Uh, and so we've been doing this, this uh, for a while as far as like your traditional drop-in where a student may come into the, our offices uh, during a certain time and be able to come in with their resume and have it looked over quickly. Uh, we usually typically had graduate students uh, from either the Masters in HR programs or other programs um, who are uh, been trained in looking at these resumes to go over them. Um, but one thing that, you know, I, one thing that we've been able to do during this past year is to convert a lot of our opportunities so that it's not just the face-to-face -face opportunities, but we also have virtual appointments and virtual drop-ins. Um, you know, basically taking advantage of a bad situation with COVID and whatnot is that we were able to reach actually a lot more students because of this. Um, we are now able to reach, you know, students that are from different statewide campuses and we're able to set up appointments when after, even after our um, offices are closed. Uh, and it's been really great as far as being able to reach others and to give this opportunity to them. Um, so we've been extending those times. Um, it's allowed us to offer more times as well mm -hmm. for that. And then um, another thing is that we, we try to encourage for the drop-in hours, because as we said, the career coaches themselves are having, you know, want to talk a little bit more with the, those who are just graduating or just about to graduate soon, and seniors and juniors. Um, and so a lot of times we'll have faculty who recommend that they go to our office um, for an assignment or something like that, which is great. And we love to have them in our office. Um, we think though, as far as like these graduate students and this drop-in times, it's great for them to, to work with that on their assignments. So if there's any, um, any involvement, any, you know, please send them over to us, but definitely refer them over to the um, drop-in, the graduate career peers that we have there. Uh, and then afterwards we can do some follow-up yeah. appointments with them for that more face-to-face -face and that virtual and that they can get that information. And that um, information on how to get there is right actually on the front page of our website uh, where they can click and set up an appointment using the handshake for that. Yeah, and just to reiterate, you know, with those class assignments, the drop-in hours are typically more uh, timely for students where, you know, career coaches will have appointments back to pack. And so we don't want students to submit their assignment late or anything. So the drop-in hours are really good, um, particularly for that. Um, the other area that we've worked a lot on the past year has been the career series classes. So these are three classes that we launched this fall. They are seven week, one credit online courses that are open to all students. And we had a really successful fall semester with them for the first um, seven week session. 
We're currently looking at all of the feedback from the idea survey and uh, feedback we've collected in the classroom and other ways to get them ready again for the spring semester. So they're USU 1400, 2400, and 3400. USU 1400 is geared towards freshmen and sophomores that are looking at major and career options. And then 2400 is geared most, mostly towards the sophomores and juniors that want to learn more about how do I get an internship, how do I gain experience, all of that, you know, the really good experiential learning opportunities. And then 3400 is really for juniors and seniors who are getting ready to launch their career. So ones that are getting closer to graduation, getting closer to that full-time job search. Again, the classes were super successful and we have added a lot more sections for the spring semester. So if you have students that you're talking with that have questions around these topics, definitely refer them to these courses and we would really love to have them in the classes. And so another aspect that we looked at was actually our website itself and how do we make our website a little bit more user friendly. And so before um, when we before our site was actually kind of really busy, it was looked at as more of an announcement board or that we would put something up there at it whenever there was a career fair, if there was a certain activity or if there was some news that we wanted to share um, with students. But it wasn't really that organized and such. And so what we did um, is that we conducted a focus group with students and tried to ask them, you know, what would help enhance the user experience there. Uh, and some of the things that we did was kind of reorganize it so that we could show the resources by college so that a student who was an engineering student perhaps could go straight to the resources by college and be able to see what kind of resources we had tailored to them in their degree and their majors. Um, and so that was one that we really helped organize it together. Um, others was just to help them you know, access the most popular things in for example, like the job posting sites on Handshake or for the drop-in resumes or the different career exploration tools and things that we have there. Um, and so that um, has been really good at helping students to navigate through our website and to get access to these resources much quicker and much easier. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing that we wanted to focus on a lot are the different partnerships that we have with the, the rest of the campus community. And so some of those have been with the faculty and staff. Uh, presentation request is probably one of the, the most um, requests that we get. And that would be more of um, trying to develop the, the idea that the responsibility of career development for our students is not just one office, but it's actually a part of a community, part of the entire university to help our students to succeed. And you know, our center can provide that guidance to them to show them that there's so many great resources uh, for students to access to help them with their career development all throughout the university. And so we're trying to you know, help develop those partnerships so that um, those other resources can see, you know, not only are they a great resource and a great experience for them, but it also will help them um, connect with their career goals. Uh, and so, like we mentioned before, the career modules, that is one of the best ways for faculty um, to engage by uh, just implementing a few bits of uh, career knowledge, career development tools into their classrooms. But another great way is the presentation request, one that we can go into the uh, classroom, meet with them and talk with the students, answer any questions that might be specific questions that they're looking for. Um, in fact, I think this coupled with the modules actually are, are a great partnership there where students can do some modules to prepare for the class and then we can come in and give sort of a presentation and then that follows up with some assignments and things that they do there. Um, the other things that we have, you know, it can really provide, um, the other things we've been doing is for example, the student employment and work study, we've been doing a lot of activities with them, including um, providing more of an on-campus job uh, career fair or on-campus job fair, essentially so students can find um, some of those work study opportunities uh, and trying to help people define, you know, internships or different projects and things that they can do to help move those things forward. So definitely, um, you know, this faculty tab will be really helpful for you. Definitely check that out for some of the resources we've talked about today. Um, and if you have any questions, but also any ideas of ways that we can collaborate with you, we are so happy to talk with you and um, see how we might be able to come up with something that will be really useful for you and your classes. Mm -hmm. Also with that faculty tab, you notice even if you look at it, you know, that's where you can find you presentation requests, but also if you wanted more information on internships, like who's the internship coordinators mm -hmm. in your college, um, you can access that first destination data that we have through there. 
um, learn more about hiring students for on-campus work and also connecting with those career modules for faculty. Okay, so where we ourselves have been using the five design mindsets, it's a process. Um, we are currently, you know, prototyping a lot of our new initiatives and then we are going to be assessing and reflecting so that we can make some tweaks for spring semester and continue to grow and scale our services so that we can really connect with all students across the university. Um, faculty and staff are such a huge partner for us so we really appreciate any of the support you provide and just even being here on the webinar is a huge help as um, we know you're already our partners. Um, so let us know how we can connect with you if you have ideas. We're so happy to talk about it. Um, and we would love to just open it to if, if there's any questions. All right, looks like Shelly has got a question. Shelly, you can either type it in the chat or you can unmute and say it, and we'll repeat it up here. Hello? Yes. Objective in my class. Like, what, what am I trying to achieve? All right. What would be the objective yeah. there? That's a really good question, Shelley. I think the objective would be helping students connect the content of what they're learning in your class to how it can apply to the uh, various career paths. Um, so even if they're learning, if it's the module on learning how to write resumes, even taking the learning objectives from the class and seeing how students can articulate that into their job search. You know, if it's a bullet point on a resume, um, even understanding the skill, just better understanding the skills they're gaining in terms of how it applies to career. So really just bridging that connection between what am I learning in the class and how does this apply to the world of work. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, um, just at least in the research as far as what, um, you know, the, the most effective connection that students have are with their faculty. Mm -hmm. That, um, so, you know, we can give them recommendations at a presentation and sometimes that'll, that'll click on some of them, but if they hear it from the faculty and they, they can see how it's going to apply, how the stuff that they're learning applies to them in their mm -hmm. career goals, um, it, it just cements it even further in it. Um, one, it enhances their own ed, you know, decision to, to study that, that topic, and they're like, oh, I can see this working in my career. This is good for my future. Uh, this is a good class. I want to do that. But also, it, it shows them uh, just a little bit more application on how this is going to help move them forward. Mm -hmm. And I want to reiterate too with the faculty modules, we know that um, classes are already really busy, really full of great curriculum. So we've made sure that once it's copied into your class, you have the option to edit, delete, keep pieces of it. So you can really keep what you think is most applicable for your specific class. Yeah. And feel free to add your own content. Yeah. You know, if there's additional things that you know because you guys are experts in it, um, add your own experience, expertise, mm -hmm. connections with um, alumni that you still have. Again, that, that faculty connection is really key. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. We have another question here in the chat that asks, could you give us an overview of what students learn in the 2400 internship class? Sure, yeah. And that's actually one of the classes I um, teach for that one. And so um, part of the things that they learn is a little bit on how to identify the experiences that they have. So that it's not just an internship, um, but there are volunteer opportunities, things that you've done in clubs and organizations. All of those um, count as experience. And with that experience, you can, if you're able to identify what that experience is and put it into your um, onto your resume or clearly describe what you've done as far as in an interview. Um, that's kind of the first areas that we look over uh, and we, we kind of lead them to different resources to do that. We also go over um, a practice that's called, um, it's based on a book by Steve Dalton called The Two-Hour Job Search, but essentially they um, create a list of different you know companies or organizations that they would like to work with, like a really large extensive list and try to um, narrow it down to what are the 
what of those organizations have a lot of alumni in it and which of those organizations are really motivated as far as like what they're hiring um, and which ones have a lot more uh, you know potential for them to to be um, to reach their goals and then they take that list and they look for different alumni or different connections uh, that are in there from some of the top of those lists and looking at those tops you know those top connections reach out to those connections um, by you know practicing networking essentially by reaching out to them and asking them for either informational interviews or um, trying to build that connection with those and so it really helps them to see um, it kind of gives them like a recipe or some uh, some directions on how do you network right and it's just it's one method but it gives them the practice of doing that method there mm -hmm. and then it also goes over a little bit of how you do your resume and how do you do those um, informational interviews as far as like what kind of topics to bring up, how do you follow up with that person, um, and what kind of approach are you going to do that. And so we do a lot of exercises in that as well. So it, it gives them that practice and then um, we invite them to kind of reach out as well to others. Um, I have a question. So in all fairness, Joseph, I teach um, writing in the workplace. So Joseph has come and done presentations and we also did some things where we sent our students there. And I loved the students also really appreciated having the virtual options to, to check in. At ET, we've got a lot of statewide faculty. Um, so I'm wondering, are all the options that we saw for faculty available to statewide? Or kind of what things could those statewide faculty be maybe tapping into um, from the center? for? Yes, they're all statewide. So mm -hmm. as we were creating these new initiatives, we wanted to make sure statewide could access it. So everything, all of our classes are virtual right now. We'll start implementing face-to-face -face ones again um, for fall next year, but everything's virtual. So we want it. And we've also seen students prefer virtual appointments lately. Um, we've had way fewer in-person appointments than virtual. So we want to make sure we keep virtual going. And I think it, it's good to note that, you know, statewide has been, from, from the beginning, mm -hmm. kind of uh, as we were planning this, in fact, we have a couple of other um, team members, um, Marissa Armitstead over in the Salt Lake campus, as well as Cindy Higgins over in the Blanding campus. Um, as far as when we were coming up with these ideas, like how do we reach out to them, we made sure that statewide was involved so we can um, make sure that we connect to those mm -hmm. um, students as well. Yeah. Other questions? Um, um, th this, this is, is great. great. We, we did, did this, this in our program, program uh, two, two years ago, ago where we went and moved all of our resume building into our introduction class. class. Even, Even though many of those students may not stay in our major and you start, start building their resume there. there. Mm -hmm. and the, payoff the payoff has been awesome as we've seen, seen them transition to seniors where normally they were starting to worry about their resumes then. They have them and then it's taking them and they know better how to use them. I love that we always just embed that module in the modules into that Thank you so much for taking time out this week. If you didn't catch them, they were also on a web on a podcast, video podcast. We need to know so we've got a lot of good looking people. Catch up and catch that podcast. This will also be made available on the ETE website um, here shortly. Um, thanks everybody for joining us and have a great week and break next week if you get one.